In this easy ed video lecture, we are going to learn about partial derivatives, geometric interpretation of partial derivatives, second order partial derivatives, and finally total derivatives. Suppose you want to forecast the weather this weekend in Lunavla. You construct a formula for the temperature as a function of several environmental variables like humidity, atmospheric pressure, wind, each of which is not entirely predictable. Since temperature depends on these variables, therefore temperature is called a dependable variable, while humidity, atmospheric pressure and wind are the independent variables. Now you would like to see how your weather forecast would change as one particular environmental factor changes, holding all the other factors constant. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. To do this investigation, you would use the concept of a partial derivative. The process of differentiating a function of several variables with respect to one of its variables while keeping the other variables fixed is called partial differentiation and the resulting derivative is a partial derivative of the function. Let the temperature T depend on variable X and Y, that is T equals F X Y. The rate of change of f with respect to x holding y constant is called the partial derivative of f with respect to x and is denoted by f sub x of xy. Similarly, the rate of change of f with respect to y is called the partial derivative of f with respect to y and is denoted by f sub y of xy. Formally, we define the partial derivative of f with respect to x as f sub x of xy equal to del f by del x which is equal to limit h tending to 0 f of x plus h y minus f of xy over h. Notice that we use the curly symbol del to denote partial differentiation rather than d which we use for ordinary differentiation. Similarly we define the partial derivative of f with respect to y as f sub y of xy equal to del f by del y which is equal to limit h tending to 0 f of xy plus h minus f of xy over h. In practice we use our knowledge of single variable calculus to compute partial derivatives. Here is a function of two variables x and y. f of xy equal to y plus 6 sine x plus 5y squared. Let us look at its graph. As discussed earlier, partial derivative with respect to x means regard all other letters as constants and just differentiate the x parts. In our example and likewise for every two variable function, this means that in effect we should turn around our graph and look at it from the far end of the y axis. We are looking at the xz plane only. We see a sine curve at the bottom and this comes from the 6 sine x part of our function fxy is equal to y plus 6 sine x plus 5y square. The y parts are regarded as constants. Now for the partial derivative of fxy is equal to y plus 6 sine x plus 5y square with respect to x, the derivative of the 6 sine x part is 6 cos x. The derivative of y parts is 0 since they are regarded as constants. Hence del f by del x equals 6 cos x. Similarly, the expression partial derivative with respect to y means regard all other letters as constants, just differentiate the y parts. As we did above, we turn around our graph and look at it from the far end of the x-axis. So we see and consider things from the y-z plane only. We see a parabola. This comes from the y square and y terms in f x y is equal to y plus 6 sine x plus 5 y square. The 6 sine x part is now regarded as constant. Now for the partial derivative of fxy is equal to y plus 6 sine x plus 5y square with respect to y. The derivative of the y parts with respect to y is 1 plus 10y. The derivative of the 6 sine x part is 0 since it is regarded as a constant where we are differentiating with respect to y. Hence del f by del y equals 1 plus 10y. 
Let us now look at different notations for the partial derivative function. Let z equal to f of xy. The partial derivative f sub x of xy can also be written as del f by del x of xy or del z by del x. Similarly, f sub y of xy can also be written as del f by del y of xy or del z by del y. The partial derivative f sub x of x, y evaluated at the point x naught, y naught can be expressed in several ways. f sub x of x naught, y naught or del f by del x evaluated at x naught, y naught or del f by del x of x naught, y naught. Similarly, the partial derivative f sub y of x, y evaluated at the point x naught, y naught can be expressed as f sub y of x naught, y naught into or del f by del y evaluated at x naught, y naught, or del f by del y of x naught, y naught. We know that if f is a function of one variable x, then the derivative of f dash x gives the slopes of the tangent lines to its graph. Do partial derivatives also mean something similar? The answer is yes. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. Let us now understand what the partial derivatives mean geometrically. First, let us see what does f sub x at point x naught y naught mean. When we hold y equal to a constantly y equals y naught, z equals f x y becomes the function z equals f x y naught of x whose graph is the intersection of the surface z equals f x y with the vertical plane y equals y naught. The x derivative f x x naught y naught is the slope in the positive x direction of the tangent line to this curve at x equals x naught. Next, let us see what does f sub y at the point x naught y naught mean. Similarly, when we hold x equal to a constant x naught z is equal to f x y becomes the function z equals f x naught y of y whose graph is the intersection of the surface with the plane x equals x naught and the y derivative f y x naught y naught is the slope in the positive y direction of the tangent line to this curve at y equals y naught. The partial derivative of a function is a function, so it is possible to find the partial derivative of a partial derivative. We define the second order partial derivative as follows. For a function z equals f x y, if the indicated partial derivatives exist then, this is read as the second order partial derivative of z with respect to x. Note that the 2's are not exponents. This is read as the second order partial derivative of z with respect to x with respect to y. This is read as the second order partial derivative of z with respect to y and with respect to x. This is read as the second partial of z with respect to y the second time. Notice when using the del symbol it is read and found from right to left. However, when using the subscript notation, it is found and read from left to right. These are called the mixed partial derivatives. Let us look at an example. Find all the second partials for z equal to fxy, which equals 5x cube y square minus 4x square y power 4 plus 7y cube minus 8x plus y minus 10. First, we must find the first partial derivatives. Next, find all of the second partials of which there are four. Notice that zxy and zyx answers are the same. They should always be the same for any problems we work. In the previous section, we discussed partial derivatives of a function. f with respect to a single variable while keeping all of the other independent variables constant. Now we move on to the next related concept of a total derivative. Using total derivatives we can examine how growth of one variable is caused by growth of all other variables. Assume you want to increase the square footage of a house where area equals length times width 
or A equals LW. If you increase the length, the change in area is equal to the increase in length times the current width. This gives del A by del L equals W, which is nothing but the partial derivative with respect to length, since width is constant. Therefore, the increase in area is equal to dA, which is further equal to del A by del L times dL. If you increase the width, the change in area is equal to the increase in width times the current length. Again, this gives del A by del W equals L, which is nothing but the partial derivative with respect to width, since length is constant. Therefore, the increase in area is equal to dA equal to del A by del W times dW. Next, we combine the two effects. An increase in both length and width has the following impact on area. Now we have dA equals del A by del L times dL plus del A by del W times dW plus dW times dL. But since derivatives always deal with instantaneous slope and small changes, dW times dL is small and ignored, resulting in dA equals del A by del L times dL plus del A by del W times dW. Effectively, we see that the change in the dependent variable A comes from changes in the independent variables W and L. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. In general, given the function Z is equal to FXY, we have df equals del f by del x times dx plus del f by del y times dy. The key advantage of the total derivative is it takes variable interaction into account. The partial derivative del f by del x examines the effect of x on z if y doesn't change. This is the direct effect. However, if x affects y, which then affects z, we might want to measure this indirect effect. Total derivatives dividing throughout by dx and simplifying, we get df by dx equals del f by del x plus del f by del y times dy by dx. Here we see that x's total impact on z is broken up into two parts. 1. x's direct impact on z through the partial derivative. 2. x's indirect impact on z through y. Obviously, if x and y are unrelated, then del y by del x equals 0, and then the total derivative collapses to the partial derivative. Similarly, the total derivative of a function f of three variables x, y, and z is defined as df equal to del f by del x times dx plus del f by del y times dy plus del f by del z times dz. Let us look at a few examples now. Example 1. Find the total derivative for the function e to the power x, y, z. Substituting and simplifying, we get du equals to e to the power x, y, z times y, z, dx plus x, z, dy plus x, y, dx. Let's have a quick review of what we've studied in this lecture. We started with the definition of partial differentiation. Then, we moved on to the meanings of partial derivatives with respect to x and y. Next, we saw the definitions of partial derivatives with respect to x and y. Then we saw the different notations for the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. Next came the geometric interpretation of the partial derivatives. Finally, we understood the meaning of total derivatives.